What is going on Shwayze gang? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's video. Today we're going to be doing a small little modification on the Hellcat that everybody that has a wide body challenger or charger needs to do. I talking about that every single one of you with a wide body needs to have installed well that is this hundred dollar box full of plastic is what you need installed on your wide body challengers or chargers now what exactly is in this box that is a very good question and what I ended up purchasing are wide body rock guards for my 2020 Hellcat. Now the question is, what are rock guards? They're pretty much just mud flaps that you put on your car. So they're not the most appealing in terms of aesthetics, but they definitely serve a very good purpose. Now when I first purchased this car back in October, a lot of you guys in like the very first video told me the number one thing I need to get with this wide body is some rock guards or mud flaps as I may refer to them in today's video. But you know, you guys said that the way that this wide body is set up, you're going to get a lot of rock chips on the door panel, on the rear fender, and also on you know the rear bumper over here where the side marker light is. And I'll be completely honest, I didn't believe you guys. I know, I know, I know, and now I have to eat my words and admit that I made a mistake. The reason I'm saying that is because a couple weeks ago I was washing this car, doing a really nice detailed job on it, and as I was drying it off, I noticed that there happened to be some micro scratches on uh, the driver and passenger side door. Now, they're pretty much unnoticeable to the human eye, like I can't really even point them out on camera. Um, there's actually already a plastic film here from the factory. So from here and down below, thankfully it's protected by a little bit of a clear bra or paint protection film. But above here, it's a painted surface. And you know, I can't really say there are any really big scratches or dings, but under the sunlight when I was polishing it, it was definitely noticeable. There's like a little micro ding over there that I don't think you'll be able to catch on camera. Um, perhaps you can. You can see it's a little bit of like a, a shine or a reflection to it. That's a small ding from a rock chip. Um, and unfortunately, even if I had paint protection film on this whole fender, I doubt I'd be able to catch that little chip right here on the very edge of the wide body fender. Um, and you know, just all around here, there are just some little, little scratches. And the same goes for the passenger side. And again, you have to be a perfectionist to really notice them. But it is very noticeable to me, especially when I'm cleaning the car and considering this car has like 3,000 miles on it, uh, it's just a little bit upsetting. And so I will be the first to admit that I made a mistake. I didn't purchase the rock guards soon enough. That should have been probably my first purchase since I bought this car because the one unfortunate thing about the wide body is, although I love it and the look of it is in my opinion just so amazing and superior to the narrow body, again, just a personal opinion, but the one disadvantage is this car happens to get a lot of rocks under these big 11 inch wheels. I mean, everywhere I go, there are rocks anywhere. Like it could be a perfectly clean surface. It can be a drag strip runway and I'm sure I will have a bunch of rocks flying out under the car. So unfortunately, that's something that I've noticed with the wide body that I never noticed with the narrow body challenger. Stay tuned for a video I'm going to actually discuss in the future whether I recommend getting a wide body or if it's better to stick with the narrow body. Full disclosure, I love the wide body. I think it's worth it, but I'm gonna break down in that video what things you should consider as pros and cons. So if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you do so so you guys can stay tuned for that video when it comes out. One quick note, if you guys have not seen my last video where I turned this car into Hellrider, uh, yeah, that looks pretty awesome. If you guys haven't seen that video, I'm gonna throw it up on the screen right now so you guys can check out that installation of the lights inside of the front grille. But anyways, what I purchased was Rock Guards from ZL1 Add-ons. Now, I am not sponsored by ZL1 Add-ons at all. The only other thing I've ever purchased from them is actually the front splitter guard protector, which I made a video about 
couple months ago, but they make a pretty decent product. And uh, the reason it took me so long to pull the trigger and do this was not because I necessarily didn't believe that there were gonna be rocks hitting my car. I just thought this was way overpriced. For both the front and the back, it cost me a little over $100, which I just don't think that a piece of plastic in a one inch box is worth a hundred bucks. And that was like my biggest hesitation buying this product. But what it prevents for at least 90 to 95% of cases um, is going to be worth the price of a hundred bucks. I mean, I do not want to repaint this car like ever. And I don't want to continue seeing rock chips on the car. So that's why I ultimately decided to pull the trigger on this. I do think that the back tires actually don't really scratch up this fender over here, or this bumper I should say, because it kind of flies out from over here and it doesn't really hit this side over here. The most it'll hit is probably maybe this section of the fender, but other than that, this rear bumper is protected. Where you get the most amount of damage is actually from the front over here because the rocks will fly out and end up scratching along the door and that rear fender. So the fronts are probably the more important ones to get. The reason I did all four is because, well, I do wanna protect that bumper just in case, but also I think it'll look a lot better and more uniform if you have four of them rather than just two on the front. Unfortunately, these are not the most attractive looking things to your car. Um, I've heard some people actually take them off for car shows. And I'm gonna take a look at what product they sent me, but to my understanding, this isn't really a product that you can take on and off very often because the clips that come with it will break and degrade over time. So this is more of a, you're, you know, install it once and you're done. So keep that in mind if you're doing this installation and if you wanna pull the trigger on something like this because it's gonna stay on the car permanently. Um, and it's not a hard installation by any means, but it's just not gonna wear very well if you take it on and off. So without further ado, let's open up this box, let's see what's in it, and let's see how this installation goes. It shouldn't take very long, and I'll give you my thoughts at the end. All right, there you have it right there. This is what cost me 100 bucks. This is about 50, and this is another 50. So uh, yeah. As you can tell, it's just a pretty flimsy piece of plastic. But anyways, I am done complaining. Uh, you can get these for the narrow bodies as well. I don't really know why you would unless it's just a style choice because when I had the narrow body, I rarely ever got rock chips on the car, especially on this section over here. Maybe that back because I had 315 millimeter diameter tires in the scat pack, but other than that, you didn't really need it. Anyways, let's see what they have in this bag and let's continue the installation. Okay, so this is what the plastic looks like out of the bag. One thing to note is this smooth side, the one that looks shiny, that's going to be facing inside of the wheel well, whereas the rough side, which looks a little bit more, I guess, finished, you could say, that is going to be facing outside of the wheel well. So this is obviously the driver's side, and then this one is going to be the passenger side. Now, what comes in the bag are these bag of clips. One thing to mention that's kind of nice for ZL1 add-ons to do, and they even include a note about it in their bag, but this pretty much mentions that wide body challengers come with a various different types of side fender edges. And they're talking about this edge over here. This is actually where we're going to be clipping onto. And they're mentioning that there's different sizes to this edge over here, and for that reason, they decided to include two different types of clips, a small and a large, so that you know you don't have to return this product if it doesn't fit your car. And it's funny, they mentioned that, as a side note, we're trying to identify which cars have thicker edges than others, but there has been no rhyme or reason between the same model vehicle. So, Dodge being kind of funny there. In this bag, uh, there actually is a screw, there's actually two screws, um, that you can use for this installation, but I do wanna know that you do not need to screw into the fender of this car to do this installation. You can just use the clips they provide and it should clip right into the edge of the fender, but if you wanna add maybe added security so that it doesn't fly off at any point, you can screw these in. Uh, the screw hole is actually right here at the bottom and it's going to go just on the bottom edge, uh, kind of closer inside of the wheel well. I'm probably not going to do that unless these are really loose, but we'll see how this installation goes and then we'll make the final decision from there. You can buy accessory clips on their website, so 
Uh, if you do choose to put them on and off every single time you go to a car show, um, you can buy additional ones like these and that way you don't have to worry about wearing these out. Okay, so we're just going to put this pretty much right up against this fender and then we're gonna use those clips and they've already kind of machined off a little edge over here and then that clip is going to attach over here and on the inside edge of this fender. Okay, well there you have it folks. So what I ended up doing is using the larger clips, which is what they recommended to try first. And if that doesn't work, they said use the small ones. One thing to note is the front wheels use a different set of rock guards than the rear wheels. Um, they say it on the packaging. But another way that you can notice that is this has four clips, one, two, three, four. Whereas the rear actually only has three because uh, the fender comes up a lot higher on the rear tires. So um, that's in there, it's pretty tight. Um, it's a little loose at the bottom, so I could see why they want you to add a screw there or they give you the option to add the screw, but I'm just not gonna do it. I think it's strong enough on there as is. Like I'm giving it some force and it doesn't seem to be lifting. So we're gonna do the same thing to the passenger side and then move on to the rear wheels as well. One thing to note while you're doing this installation is the height of these rock guards from the floor. Um, if you'll notice, you know, you have this hole here which is intended for a screw that you don't have to use, but that is what I used as a guide to determine how high I was going. I just made sure that that hole would line up against the fender um, and it wasn't so low that the screw would pretty much just go all the way through it because then I felt like it was lower than what it was intended to be. Okay, the front is done. Let's move on to the back side. Now what's nice about this back one is the top edge of this rock guard is going to line up exactly with the seam on the rear fender and the rear bumper. So that's how you know the exact height, which is a lot easier than the front side. with today's installation and in all honesty I think it actually looks pretty good I want to hear you guys' comments down below but um, I think it gives it kind of a nice menacing stance uh, kind of like a demon I think the demons came with these standard if I'm not mistaken but um, you know it kind of just finishes off the look of the car I like how they turned out and you get the added protection of fewer rock chips crossing my fingers hopefully that is the end result, that's the whole point of doing this installation. Now overall, this installation took about five minutes to do all four wheels, so really not that bad. The most annoying part is just using the clips that they provided because um, they're pretty tight, so you have to apply quite a bit of pressure to get these clips on the edge of this fender. But that's a good thing because I didn't have to use a screw down here, and they're pretty tight. I mean, unless somebody comes up and yanks these out, they shouldn't really be going anywhere. And the same goes, for the back, even though the back used less clips than the front, they're still pretty tight. Like, I don't imagine these flying off, even at high speeds. Well, that pretty much finishes off today's video. The reason I actually wanted to do this installation and film it for you guys is because I do think that it is a good product. You guys know me, I try to be as real as possible, and after seeing those little micro scratches on the car, which I probably could polish out with like a nice buffer, but after seeing those, I really was sold on getting these rock guards. I think it's going to prevent maybe 90 to 95% of giant rocks from hitting the car. And although it'll be kind of difficult for me to tell if it actually works, obviously if I see more scratches, then it doesn't work. But I will be able to tell if there's any large gashes or big rocks hitting the plastic. And if there are, that means that these rock guards prevented those rocks from hitting the door and the rear fender. I don't think it's necessary on the narrow body, but wide bodies, unfortunately, the way they're designed, you do get rock chips in those wheel wells pretty much every time you go out. So anyways, thank you guys for joining me in today's video. Like always, don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed it. Put a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on the looks and the installation. And also, if you're one of the early ones that called me out that I should get this done like the first week of getting this car, be sure to find me on Instagram and TikTok at Schwazy underscore. 
And like always, my friends, stay healthy, stay shwayze, and have a wonderful day.